Notre Dame commit quarterback Deuce Knight flips his commitment from the Fighting Irish to the Auburn Tigers. And if you're an Auburn fan, there was a little bit of an exhale because for a while there, he had kept on visiting Auburn, and you're like, okay, is he going to commit? Is he going to commit? Is he going to commit? And he commits, and he sees your offense, and your offense struggles, and you're like, gosh dang, man, this was, we blew it. We blew it. At your most morbid thought, I think that was maybe where you arrived at. However, he's committed. He's going to Auburn. Obviously, nothing's final to pe till pen meets paper, but he's committed to Auburn. And uh, I don't think we'll see him flip another time. I mean, that's just my feel on it, but what do I know? Auburn Tiger fans, massive, massive gift for y'all. Make sure you're subscribed right here on the On3 YouTube channel. We talk recruiting, we talk game predictions, we got analysis, we got reactions, everything having to do with the greatest sport on the face of planet Earth and your Tigers. We're going to talk about it right here. So make sure you're subscribed. We appreciate you in advance for locking in. What is Auburn getting in high-profile quarterback Deuce Knight? Uh, to put it simply, an absolute dude. All right, I mean, he's six foot four and a half, 208 pounds, runs a 4'5", And oh, by the way, he was on threes, Elite 11 MVP. Now, the reason why that's significant, you talk about Deuce Knight, and the first thing you say is, oh, man, such a good athlete. He's so special the way that he moves, his speed, the way he's a home run threat with his legs. That's all true. But at the Elite 11 now, it's a lot of seven on seven. It's assessing you as a quarterback. So for our very own Charles Power, Director of Scouting and Rankings here at On3, which, again, it's not me. I'm not in charge of the rankings here. Charles is. So if you have grievances, take it up with him and Cody Belair. But Charles Power knows ball, to put it simply. He is the most, I mean, intense workhorse when it comes to what he does with his craft and trying to evaluate top prospects at the high school level. He put Deuce Knight as his Elite 11 MVP. All right, so that should tell you something with what we think about him as a quarterback. Uh, the comp for him as a high school prospect for us is uh, Anthony Richardson. Yeah, pretty uh, pretty special talent there. Again, to put it simply, he is a dude. And we said it yesterday on the show when we were unpacking the path forward at Auburn. Going into the season, I think we maybe talked ourselves into a bit too much that you could manage Hugh Freeze's system and you could hide a not subpar quarterback, but an average quarterback. I don't think that's the case. I feel pretty firmly now that's not the case when it comes to getting the most out of Hugh Freeze's offensive system. You need a guy, all right? And Deuce Knight, to put it simply, again, he is a guy with all the athletic attributes I just mentioned for you. If you could build a quarterback for Hugh Freeze's system in a lab, I think he would resemble a lot of what Deuce Knight here brings to the table. So when we zoom out a little bit, we said this in our reaction video that we put out on the channel yesterday, another reason to be subscribed. I think right now at Auburn in this 2025 class, which, by the way, for those of y'all that haven't been keeping a pulse on this, uh, Auburn is currently top five when it comes to the on three industry team recruiting rankings. Not winning a lot of ball games right now, and you hate that, but I'll just say this. If you're an Auburn fan, just hold it down a little bit longer. Hold down the fort a little bit longer. And what you land here in Deuce Knight is the lead actor for the movie poster that is your 2025 recruiting class. Maybe more importantly, you get an anchor for this 2025 recruiting class. Because Deuce Knight didn't commit before the season. Deuce Knight didn't commit in Auburn's 5-0 and headed to Georgia, and he's riding the vibes of, you know, Auburn's trending upward, let's go, like we're playing good ball. He committed now. You've won two football games. He committed now, and you're a 24.5-point dog going to Athens, Georgia. From what I can tell, the nature of this commitment and the timing of going public with this commitment should tell us a lot about how he views Auburn going forward. And I think if you're a kid considering Auburn or committed in that 2025 class you're like okay we got a dude at quarterback who's committing right now okay we can we can hold it down a little bit longer when we get to Auburn we're going to make sure we do our best to uh get this thing headed in the right direction now to be clear a lot of football games left for Auburn this year so it's not to say they can't still finish strong and find a way to kind of recreate some momentum and get some juice they had before the season but going forward, I think there's going to be a temptation here. As soon as Deuce Knight steps foot on campus and you'll go to Auburn Live and you'll see the message boards and you'll hear about how well he's doing at practice. Heck, we'll probably see a little bit of him uh, slinging it around during Indy and we'll see the ball jump out of his hand and I'll be like, oh man, cannot wait for him to touch the field. I cannot wait for him to get snaps as our guy at quarterback. I'm just telling you right now, my personal opinion, Deuce Knight is like a fine ribeye, all right? You can throw it on the grill as soon as you get it, and it'll be fine. Like I think it'll be serviceable. 
I think with his athleticism, he gives you a chance with what he brings to the table, being able to get out of trouble and maybe get away with some things that other less athletic quarterbacks can't. But if you want to maximize that ribeye, you want to get the most amount of potential out of that, what do you do? You let it sit, you let it marinate, you season it. To put it simply, you give it time. And I'm not saying that you redshirt Deuce Knight. I think with how uh, how good he is, if, if he is who you believe he is at Auburn, maybe he's three and done anyway, so what's the point in redshirting him? But to make him your guy and to put the pressure of the Auburn program on his shoulders from the jump, I'm like, hey, now, let's, let's pump the brakes a little bit. If it's me, if I'm an Auburn fan, the thing that I am praying for when I hit my, when I hit my knees at night, I say, okay, I would love, 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 love a transfer portal quarterback. One-year deal, bring him in. Let's win some football games. Let's inject some juice into this whole thing. Let's let Deuce Knight have a minute now to sit, learn the system, learn the offense. Heck, learn where his classes are, learn college life. And then when it's his time, when he's comfortable in the system, let's let him go, let him roll. And for those of you pushing back and saying, JD, man, like, hey, the future is now, brother. Like, it's, it's time to go. I hear you. I understand. If I'm an Auburn fan, I probably feel the same way. I got a certain amount of like, hey, come on, let's get this thing going. But we've seen what a quarterback is when you throw him into the Hugh Freeze offense before he's ready. And this isn't me trying to comp Deuce Knight and Peyton Thorne, but like, we've seen it now. Peyton Thorne has been in the system for, what, call it a year and a half, almost two years. Didn't get spring football last year, really struggled. Got spring football this year, has still had some issues. I think it's safe to say this stuff is hard. <laughs> Hugh Freeze's system, I'm not here to tell you I know all the complexities and the, the inner workings of it and all the things you have to process. You can listen to Peyton Thorne's interview over at Next Round Live. They did a great sit down with him and he walked through all of the things he has to process as a quarterback. Playing college football is hard, much less playing college football against SEC defenses. I think you want Deuce Knight to be as ready as possible for when it's his time to be the guy at Auburn, he's ready to go. He's not learning on the fly. His confidence doesn't get bruised if he doesn't have the success he wants to have. It's not a situation where he develops bad habits. Like There is such a thing now as playing too early. And Twitter quarterbacks and message board culture and preview magazines will try and tell you a kid's ready when honestly the best thing for him is to have a chance to redshirt. So I know that's not what you want to hear if you're an Auburn fan, but hear this. He is the future. He is the future. And everyone that was even starting to sniff the idea of, I don't know if Hugh Freeze is the guy. I don't know if he's the guy to lead us forward. He just got you your quarterback of the future. You have a top five class. I know this year is not what you wanted right now. It's not. A lot of runway still, but it's not what you wanted. That's okay. I don't think that writes the book on who Hugh Freeze is at Auburn just yet. All right? And this is a pretty good indicator of that. Now, when it comes to a flip... Two sides to every coin, right? Two sides to every flip, especially when you got a quarterback flipping away from Notre Dame. And you, I mean, I'll just say this, I'm not in a condescending way, but like truly just as a college football fan, my heart hurts a little bit for Notre Dame because we've continued to see this happen where they will have a really strong summer, do a phenomenal job getting some kids committed, and then over the course of the next couple of months and into the season, slowly but surely guys will decommit and end up going elsewhere. I mean, in previous classes, you had Keelon Keeley committed, or Keon Keeley committed, excuse me. He ends up flipping and ends up going to Alabama. You had uh, Dylan Edwards committed. He ends up going to uh, Colorado. What I'm trying to say here is, for Notre Dame, like, if you're asking what's the path forward here, you've shown you can go get a transfer portal quarterback. They've done that now two years in a row. And I think you could very easily continue to play that game. You got C.J. Carr in the quarterback room. Okay, so I think a lot of folks out there in South Bend, as soon as this happened, immediately went to that talking point. That's fair. He might be the man. But I think if I'm thinking about what the path forward is, like what do we do now from a Notre Dame fan? It's like just go win ball games. Go win football games because you have a chance now in the modern 12-team playoff to reset optics around what's possible at Notre Dame. And I'm not saying that factored in so much to the Deuce Knight flip, but I think in general, like, if you go make a college football playoff run, let's just say they make a run to that Final Four, which I hate saying the word's Final Four because it makes it sound like it's March Madness. I digress. You make a run to the college football playoff. Kids see that. Kids say, oh, that's, I know that brand. I know that school. I just didn't know you could go accomplish that at Notre Dame. Because we've seen them make the playoff, and then when they make the playoff, they get boat raced. By, I mean, call it a Clemson and Alabama, like whoever. But 
you talk, talk about what Notre Dame could be in this 12-team playoff and say, no, you want to accomplish all your goals, get an elite education, go play at the highest level and be able to compete at the highest level, not just play. Like, we're actually going to do some things here at Notre Dame. Reset optics in a season like this in the 12-team playoff. And we'll talk more about Notre Dame a little bit later in the show because I think a lot of folks left them for dead after NIU. But uh, I wouldn't be so sure. I wouldn't be so sure that's the case when you talk about the Irish. But again, Deuce Knight. Flipping. The freeze warning is out in full effect out there in Auburn, and uh, they got themselves a quarterback of the future out there on the Plains.